Hello and welcome to the heteroscedasticity for uh, Econ 4650. The objectives of this video tutorial are that you'll be able to observe and detect uh, heteroscedasticity, uh, learn uh, remedies for heteroscedasticity. Okay, so for the uh, heteroscedasticity video tutorial, we're going to be following a similar format to the last video tutorial. Uh, so that is not exciting, but that's the way it is. Um, so first we're going to produce some simulated data as an example to see what pure heteroscedastic error looks like. Um, so here we go. Uh, we're going to turn off our uh, significant stars here. So show signif okay set a seed and we're going to build our error again here so we're building uh, error in, as a object that is like a hundred spaces long And then for i in 1 to 100, uh, oops, error is uh, r norm, let's see, uh, 1 pull mean of 0, uh, standard deviation of i divided by 20. Oh, so that's the key here. So that's kind of cool, right? Great. Uh, and now we're going to plot what's going on. So plot our ERR um, main equal quotation uh, hetero heteroscedastic error. Whoa! That is our heteroscedastic error. There she is. Um, so that is that. And uh, let's put a line through there, just like last time. Oops, A, B line. Uh, let's see here. H equal to zero. Uh, okay. So with these heteroscedastic errors, uh, let's generate some data based on them. So, uh, so here we go. X is uh, going to be a sequence uh, from one to one hundred of length uh, one hundred. Great. Y is going to be like uh, this. <laughs> Remember that. So here now we're doing a 0 0.8 times x. So uh, hold on to your socks here. Could get exciting. And now we're going to plot this guy, right? So x y uh, main equal to fake data. Okay, and uh, put a line through there again, a regressor line. Uh, wow. Okay, now we're going to uh, run a regression and uh, create a 95% confidence interval and look at, you know, what is going on with this, uh, you know, heteroscedasticity. Um, Let's see if what's going on with that uh, variance of the error term, right? Investigate. So here we go. Model one is uh, L M Y. Oops. Oops. God. I, sorry. Uh, y on X. Uh, we're gonna do summary uh, model one. Okay. So that is great. Uh, this looks like. Uh, oh. Before I get carried away, let's get the confidence interval in here too. Confint. Okay, so the 95% uh, confidence interval does cover the true parameter value, so that's great. And um, again, uh, in the presence of heteroscedasticity, kind of like last time, uh, the OLS slope estimates are going to be unbiased. Um, but the standard errors of the estimates uh, are going to have bias there. So the direction of bias can be positive or negative, just as with the serial co uh, correlation. And again, this is going to result in incorrect uh, t statistics. Uh, so here we go. Um, let's uh, move on to number two here, detecting heteroscedasticity. 
Okay, so for the second section, we're going to talk about uh, detecting heteroscedasticity. And the first uh, test we're going to do to do this is going to be um, the park test. And this is described on page four of the uh, text guide, as well as I believe in the chapter uh, of the book. But um, so the first part of the park test is that um, you go ahead and you run some primary regression and get uh, errors from that. Um, and then you take the logarithm of the squared residual errors there uh, and use it as your left-hand side. And then uh, for your right-hand side of the second regression, you use uh, the logarithm of uh, what they call the Z variable. Uh, and the Z variable is, um, if you look on page four there, it's that uh, it's basically what's being multiplied times um, the uh, standard error uh, to cause it to, um, or sorry, it's what's being multiplied by the variance uh, to cause it to uh, like change across uh, observations. So we're trying to find z, is what I'm trying to say. So let's do this right now. So uh, if we do uh, log e2 for log e squared there, we say log um, of model one dollar sign resid uh, raise it, uh, carrot, and then model one park is going to be uh, LM with uh, that uh, log e squared on the left hand side and then log of uh, x. So in this case we know that x is going to be what we're plugging in to try and find z. Um, sometimes you don't and that's why the park test isn't helpful. but. In this case, uh, we do, so that's great. And then look at the summary of uh, model one park. Now, um, what you do is um, uh, then you perform it like a t-test on this regression, and that'll give you um, your lowercase uh, alpha one. And if it's uh, significantly different from zero, then the test will indicate presence of heteroscedasticity. So we ran that, and this is our lowercase alpha one, and it does have a t value, which signifies that it is statistically different from zero. And so we do conclude we have the president or the uh, presence of heteroscedasticity. Uh, so that is uh, the conclusion there. Uh, and next, we're we're going to run through real quick. Uh, a gold field quant test, uh, which is going to break the sample into two parts and compare the residual sum of squares from one part with the uh, residual sum of squares from part two, and evaluate that uh, uh, ratio using an F test. And we're also going to do the uh, Bruch Pagan test, uh, which is going to um, uh, go ahead and use a, a chi square uh, variable uh, there. So Sorry, what I'm trying to say is that you need to, when you're when you're looking at chi-squared uh, distributions, you need to look at uh, page 414 and 415, uh, and then when you're looking at the Goldfield quant test, that's an F test, and you know what to do with that, hopefully by now. Hopefully I do, it's just like, who knows, right? So, uh, okay, so let's load up uh, uh, LM test, so like library uh, LM test here. And then, um, great, so it's like loading all these packages. And then we're going to do the Goldfield quant test first, so GQ uh, test of uh, model one. Okay, so uh, again, we're evaluating this as like an F statistic, and it is pretty large, and so we're going to reject the null hypothesis of, uh, of uh, homoscedasticity there, and conclude that we have some heteroscedasticity. Um, and then we can run the BP test, the Bruch Pagan test, pretty easy. Uh, so BP test of uh, model one uh, is going to give us uh, this uh, chi, uh, chi square value of uh, 18.8641, uh, which if you compare that to the table with one degrees of freedom, uh, at any probability uh, or at any level of significance is big enough for you to uh, reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity and conclude that you have some heteroscedasticity in your model. Um, so that's the nuts and bolts of doing those tests in R. And um, next we're going to talk about some remedies. 
Okay, so for the uh, solutions, or, or uh, remedies rather, to heteroscedasticity, um, again, you want to remember that you can think about the regression and uh, if it's well specified in terms of functional form and variable selection. Uh, you can also do generalized least squares, right? And that's uh, something that was described in the serial correlation chapter, but that we didn't practice um, in that section. So uh, we'll go ahead and run that now. So uh, if you pull in the NLME package, okay, and then um, you can say model, oops, model uh, GLS, and that is uh, GLS, see that's Y on the left hand side, X on the right hand side, uh, weights, Equal VAR power, oops, capital P. Okay, and then summary of, uh, okay, okay, and that's your uh, generalized least squares um, estimate there. So, uh, and another thing to do is again uh, that Newey West uh, technique that we did uh, in the last section as well. So, if you load up Sandwich. And you say NW is um, Newey West function uh, model one. And then uh, look at NW. Okay, and again, we're interested in the square root of the diagonal of this matrix, so these two values. And we're going to calculate our new T scores with them. So model one dollar sign coef. So pulling out the coefficients. And then the square root of uh, the diagonal of that matrix. And there you go. And uh, notice that the t uh, statistics in this example are actually larger than in the first regression, uh, emphasizing that the direction of the bias can be positive or negative. Thank you.